Shalom Chavrim. Always a pleasure to get a chance to speak with you once again. And tonight's message, uh, although I'm speaking to my Jewish brethren to try to get them to think about things that are going on, I realize that it's going to affect some of my Christian brethren as well. And so uh, as I speak about this, I'll be speaking about the Kabbalah and Bible codes. Uh, and so in, in doing so, let me just say this to my Christian brothers that are, that are dear friends that are into Bible codes before we even get started there. I'm certainly not speaking anything against you brothers that do this. Uh, I appreciate it. In fact, I enjoy a lot of the work that you guys do. But there's a message that the Lord has laid upon my heart, and it deals more specifically with Israel. And I think you'll understand why as I go into this. And hopefully, by God's grace, you don't take offense to it. But yet at the same time, that it'll also bring... Uh, uh, an understanding for Christian people as well that follow these different types of things. Uh, so anyway, let's get right into the, to the message here. I want to take first and uh, draw your attention to a scripture in Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. And um, let me just back up just a little bit and we'll go to verse 5. Amos is writing here, uh, actually, let's just start with verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? Will a lion roar in, in, the, in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den? If he has taken nothing, can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where there is no lure for it? Does a snare spring up from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a chauffeur be sounded in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall evil befall a city and the Lord has not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets." The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Now see, God gives you all the analogies through his, through his prophet here, Amos, to build this up, showing you that, of course, there is not a bird going to go jump into a trap unless there's something there to lure him, to bring him in, and then he gets caught. Uh, the, the lion is not going to roar just for the sake of roaring, but it's because he has prey. And then he says about Israel, you know, as if there's a chauffeur that is blown. Um, you know, do, does not the city take the warning? And the Lord has, has uh, excuse me, um, and shall evil befall a city, and the Lord has not done it. Surely the Lord God will do nothing without revealing his secrets to the servants, uh, excuse me, to his servants, the prophets. Now, I bring this up because it sets the stage for how God works in his Bible. Now, another interesting passage I want to bring to your attention, and let me just quickly, I have these written down and I want to share this with you. This is from Matthew's Gospel. Um, and, and by the way, keeping in mind, I know there's a debate, and I'm going to speak to you guys about this soon, about the book of Matthew originally being written in Hebrew. And ironically, as Nehemi Gordon spoke about this, I had searched for years myself trying to find out, was there really a Hebrew version of it? So I've always been persuaded that there's a lot more there than what we realize. But anyway, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 16. And I want to take you to verse 18. And to set, to set the stage here of um, God's word here, Matthew 16, verse 18 here. Um, let me back up a little bit. Verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon. Well, back up a little bit further. The, que the question is being asked Jesus, who who do they say that I am? And, and Peter answers, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God that was to come into the world. 
And Jesus is going to answer him uh, after that. He says, uh, uh, verse 15, He saith unto them, But who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter had answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, I say and also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom in heaven, uh, of heaven, and whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now the key part right here is, and it's always been a big debate, who is the church built upon, or how is the church built? Would, I would be a better question to ask. And some people say it's built upon Peter. Well, I kind of have to differ with that because Peter was a man. And if the church is built on Peter, who immediately, after he's commissioned by Jesus, completely denies him and everything else, do we are we built uh, as a body of Christ by denying Yeshua? There's, it's just not possible. It doesn't make sense. But in this regard here, he says to him, uh, flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. What rock is he speaking about? It's the revelation of who he is. You see, God has a way of making himself known. He has a way all the way through the Bible. Uh, and I, and, and I want to share with you another one as well. Let's set this up as well. Let's go to Deuteronomy. This is through the law. Now we know that what I'm going to read to you in Deuteronomy 18, this is the prophecy of the coming of Mashiach, the coming of the Messiah. Now we say that because we know it by hindsight. Um, for the Jewish, my Jewish brethren, we don't know it as easily that way. But let's just look at the way God speaks here. When thou art come to the land which the Lord thy God gives thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There must not be found among you anyone that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or a soothsayer, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a medium, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Because of these abominations the Lord thy God drives them out from before thee, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God for these nations which shall, shall dispose, uh, excuse me, shall dispose this, hearken to soothsayers and to diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God has not permitted thee to do, excuse me, thee so to do. The Lord thy God will raise up thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like me, to whom you shall hearken, according to all that thou uh, didst desire of the Lord thy God and Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said to me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like thee, and I will put my words in his mouth. And shall speak to them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken to, to my words, which shall, shall speak, uh, excuse me, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thy heart, how... Shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Know that when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord. Now, here's the key part. Know that when, uh, excuse me, know that when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, that the thing follow not, nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken out of presumption. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now, God actually requires that when a prophet prophesies falsely, that he's put to death. It's also in the law of Moses, the laws that God commanded Israel. 
was to put to death a false prophet. And it's one of the reasons why in time past I've always really cautioned brothers and sisters about visions and dreams and things of those natures. Not to say that God doesn't do it. We know clearly that the Bible says in the latter days, your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. So it is true that these things are happening and I meet many people that do. And even myself included, I've seen visions, dreams, but I've always been very cautious about the way I present them. In fact, rarely have I ever presented anything here Occasionally I have, but even when I do, especially if it's a dream, I never put it in the category of a prophecy, but yet I'm very cautious in the way I present it to you that you're aware. I'm not sure. Unless the Lord has spoken to me directly where I know it is Him speaking, where we would say, Kaomeh Hashem. Actually, in order to be able to say, thus saith the Lord, you have to remember, you need to know his name. And no man knows that name. So we only put the word Lord in there, but that's not his name. In order to be able to truly say it, we would have to be able to fulfill the prophecy where Moses says to God, they will ask me, Mashimo, what is his name? He says, what do I say to them? And God answers in reply, I am that I am. Now it's interesting, God never answers Moses with his name, but yet neither did Israel ever ask Moses, what is your name? What is his name? You see, that's something that's about to be fulfilled. And it'll be at that moment in that hour that Moses will be able to truly say, Thus saith yod heh vav -Hey. He will actually say his name. Now, some say Yahweh, some say Yahweh, whatever the case may be, but his divine name is going to be revealed in order to be spoken again. As Zephaniah clearly points out in the book of Zephaniah, that God will restore a pure language where we will be able to call upon the name of Hashem to worship him. In truth. So, anyway, I'm setting the stage for this because with my own people, Israel, the Lord really was dealing with me about Kabbalah and Bible codes as well. And I realize why, why do the Jewish people get into these things? Now, in the Bible code, it's probably safer. I have to say that. I've got dear friends that do Bible codes, and they're very passionate about it. I am fascinated to no end with some of the codes that these brothers come up with. And no doubt, maybe there's truth to these things. I don't say that there's not. But even Rabbi Glazerson, I'll pick on him because he's my brother. He is a Jewish brother. But Rabbi Glazerson and some of the codes that he has done he predicted certain things by his codes, and I don't think Rabbi Glazerson calls it a prediction, but based on what he's trying to find out, there's been times where they didn't come to pass as he thought they would. Now, Rabbi Glazerson is pretty cautious to point out, even like when he speaks about the coming of Mashiach, that Mashiach should come by a certain, certain time, he always notes in there, too, that this is if we repent. If we do certain things, then God would do certain things. And that's a good way to present a code if you're going to present it. And then we take the Kabbalah. And I'm just kind of giving you these things in a little short nutshell here. But in the case of the Kabbalah, this is where every letter in the Hebrew language has a numeric value. In other words, the, the letter has a, a numeric value there. And then the rabbis have taken, in a, through, the, through their study, through the, through the scriptures, through the Torah, have placed on that letter a meaning behind the numeric value. And therefore, they begin to try to interpret what certain passages mean by a numeric value. Now, I'm sure many of the brethren that do codes would agree with me, especially in the case of Kabbalah, this really gets all twisted up. 
Now, it's not to say that these brothers, that are the Jewish rabbis that do it, and many of the Chabad organization do this as well, that they don't, they're not doing it by meaning well. But why do they do this in the first place? It's because the Holy Spirit is not present. It's because they're, have not, they do not have a prophet among them where God is making himself known in dreams and in visions that actually are thus saith the Lord to be able to show that God is among them. And so therefore, they're trying desperately to get an answer from God. Because they have a desire to hear from God, they want to know what the Spirit of God has to say about the hour they're living in, about their lives and the matters that are happening there. But without the Holy Spirit, they don't get it. And so they're, they're I would call it, they're grabbing for straws. I remember one time sitting with Rabbi Misrachia, uh, not Rabbi Misrachia, but Rabbi uh, Mikowitz, a, a, a precious friend. And we were talking about uh, the Red Sea crossing and the meaning for the, behind the, the word suf when God had interpreted the word suf. Now the thing was, was Rabbi, Rabbi Mikowitz, he looks at this and he says to me from, from the basis of the Kabbalah that the word suf has nothing to do with the word reads. But yet, as we begin to, to analyze the prophecy that Moses says, because it, it inevitably is a prophecy, as I was sharing with him, Moses literally crossed the Gulf of Aqaba, and there's no evidence for reeds there. But yet there's chariot wheels that were discovered on the seafloor. I said, I believe that he had to have been alluding to a future event. And as I begin to share with him the Bielski story, how that Tovia Bielski had, you know, of course he knows the Bielski family anyway. We both do. And, and you know, I shared with him that, you know, you know how that uh, Tovia, he had rescued 1,200 Jews and he led them through the wilderness and they crossed eight and a half miles of swamp. And I said, Rabbi, I said, is it not true then? I said, they crossed the Sea of Reeds, a Yam Suf. And as we began to discuss this, he said, you know, Steve, I can agree with you. I believe that what happened with, with uh, Tovia Bielski is a fulfillment. I could even agree with you that this may be a fulfillment of Jeremiah 23, where it says, they will no longer say, the Lord lives and delivers the, land, the children of Israel from the land of Israel, but they, the Lord lives and delivers the, the children of Israel from the land of the north. He said, I can agree with that. He said, but when it comes to the word suf, he said, it doesn't line up with Kabbalah. And see, this is what really, it, it troubled my heart. I love him. God knows how much I love this man. And, 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 uh, but I, I could not help but think, and I, there was no sense in debating the issue because I realize his eyes are withholding right now, or withholding. But you have to understand that Kabbalah is not the word. The Word of God is made to interpret itself. In other words, when we're, you know, there, there's, there's several ways that God deals in His Word. One, He may reveal Himself through dreams and envisions. Secondly, like He said to, to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I'll build my church. What rock? The revelation of who? Yeshua is. How is the church built? In other words, to add members into the body of Mashiach is built on, his, on the revelation that He is indeed the Messiah. This is what being born again is all about. It's the revelation of knowing that He is Mashiach. And when you get the revelation that Yeshua is Mashiach, God places you in that body by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, that's how He builds His church. Revelation of His Word. Now, we see, though, that God has a prescribed method, though, of bringing forth his word is as well, and that's through, as Amos 3, 7 says, he does nothing except he reveals his secrets to his prophets first. And 
What, do, you, do you think one of the prophets are going to say something contrary to the word of God? It's not possible. Now, I'm not a prophet, but the thing is, is I can only tell you what God has revealed to me. Now, there's also a gift of prophecy according to the Christian Bible. So you could be a, a, a sister or a brother and God reveals something to you in a dream or a vision. And if it's, a, if it's a dream, you could speak the dream, but you want to be cautious in saying, I can't say that for sure that it's, you know, I mean, sometimes we, you know, you could, let me say this, you could say it's of God, if you really know it's of God. But just remember though, if it's not of God, or if it doesn't come to pass, the word of God required that prophet to be, or that dreamer to be put to death. Today, if it wasn't for the blood of Yeshua, there would be a lot of dead people. A lot of dead people. But what I see with my brethren, my Jewish brethren there, they, 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 they look to the Kabbalah as, 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 as the way to get the revelation of God's word. And it's not God's provided way. It's just not the way God does it. And now... And I, and I personally know, I mean, I know members of the family of the rabbis that, that, that I don't want to say discovered the Bible code, but actually early on, one particular sister that's a friend of mine, no doubt will watch this video. Uh, I'll just say this. She has a relative in her family that was a Jewish uh, rabbi. And God took him and spoke to his heart one day and says, go to the Torah, open up such and such a place. And I want you to count X number of letters, skip a space, like, I forget what it was now. We'll just say 50 letters and skip a space. And then write down what it says. And he does it. And I forget the exact wording. It was something like, though, that I am, I am your Savior, and my name is Yeshua. Something to that effect. And I know I don't have it right because I didn't memorize this. But anyway, the whole thing was, though, when he saw it, he knew then that Yeshua was Mashiach. And he got saved as a result. So, you see, in that respect, God took and led his servant and revealed to his servant who he was using the Bible code. But, that was God revealing himself using the Bible code. Now, again, amongst the Jewish brethren, and of course a lot of the Christian brothers do the same, they study these Bible codes. And it's not to say that they're not, they're, they're, they're fascinating to me. I, I agree with it. But they're not God's provided way for interpreting his word. God interprets his word by his word. He also uses his prophets. And when I say he uses his prophets, what I'm more referring to is the fact that when Moses and Elijah come back to straighten out the mess for Israel, and God has to send his two witnesses back to straighten this out. Why? Because the church is too scrupled up. The churches, they really scrupled up. And you have to understand, this is why he sends back two witnesses, because there's not two people in the church that can get their act together. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, if the Bible says that when Israel, when God comes back amongst Israel, that the Gentiles are going to take 10 Gentiles of the nations, will take the hold of the skirt of one Jew and say, teach us your ways, why is it that you have to ask the Jews to teach you their ways and they just recognize Yeshua to be Mashiach? Now, and, and think too, my Jewish brethren, why is it that they're just now hearing that God is with you? Now, that's another, you know, so see, it's kind of like a, it's a two-edged sword here. For the Jewish people, we say, oh, well, God is with us and everything. Well, there comes a time where, they, where the Gentiles recognize that God is with you. All right, so, so that's my question to you as well, you know, is the, is, the, is the thing that, 
they come, there's something is going to happen in Israel where they will, where the Christians will recognize God is with you and they take a hold of your skirt and say, teach us your ways. And for the Christian believers, why is it? I mean, if the Baptists have it right or the Methodists have it right or the Pentecostals have it right or the Charismatic have it right or if the Pope has it right for that matter, why does God have to send two witnesses in? If, if, if the Pope, who is, who is basically running the world now, every leader, every dignitary, I mean, you guys really, I mean, you still looking for the Mahdi? If you're looking for the Mahdi, he sits in the Vatican. You're missing the boat altogether. And believe me, there are so, and, and, or this, is, and, and this is one of the reasons why I, I, I really... I speak on this kind of talk with you guys as well. You know, even with the codes, whether you be Jewish or Gentile, how many times, you guys know it is what, better than I do, how many times have, has there been a code there that literally is laying there, but it didn't happen the way that it was interpreted to be? You see, God interprets his own word by bringing it to pass. God has a provided way that he's going to reveal things in his word. And nowhere did he ever say he would reveal it through the codes. But it's not to say, though, that God can't take and anoint a brother to find a code and see something. Like, for example, Yitzhak Rabin, the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin. A man stumbles across it. And it tr proved out to be true. In fact, that's what really has popularized all the codes is because of Yitzhak Rabin's assassination being seen in the codes before it happens. And governments, everybody, everybody does it. But the thing is, it's not God's way of doing it. You know, I realize, I, I mean, I, I don't put code searching in the same category as when God was was angry with, with and told Israel to stay away from the sorcerers and the mediums and everything else because I realize it's not. I realize God does have things hidden in there, and that is true. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that there are brothers out there that God, and sisters as well, I don't want to say it's just brothers, God forgive me for that, but I believe that God can anoint someone to find something. But what I'm concerned about, though, is when the people that are looking at these codes they put so much um, emphasis on the codes and, 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 and what's being interpreted to be basically as prophecy is this and this and this is going to happen. And, 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 I, and I don't say this in disrespect or to belittle someone that may feel really passionate that God has revealed it because they may be right. Maybe God did reveal this particular code to this brother or this code to this sister, and it may really be a prophetic thing that's going to come to pass. But my question to you, though, is we begin to examine things with the Word of God because I'm speaking here not just for the Jewish people who I'm really concerned with, with, with my Jewish brethren about things like this. Because God has specifically said how he's going to reveal himself to Israel. He is going to send two witnesses and they are going to make known to Israel by the prophets and by Moses and the prophets who Mashiach is. And nowhere will it be done by the codes. Israel will never recognize Messiah because of the code as far as a whole, as a whole. Not to say now, not, and, I, and there again, I say this with love and respect to those that do that. I don't say that God can't reveal it to somebody here or somebody there and they get it. Praise God for that. But clearly, when, when I give you the message recently about rich, the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man, he looks up from hell and he, he cries out to Abraham. He says, Father Abraham, raise up one from the dead and send them to my family. I'm just paraphrasing this. He said that they would believe. And, and Abraham says back to the rich man, he says, 
They have Moses and the prophets, and if they don't hear them, they won't be persuaded, though one be raised from the dead. Again, Jesus' own parable puts it back in the Word. And, and not in a mysterious way, but in other words, laying in plain sight in the Scripture. Now, true, Jesus spoke in parables, and they ask him the question, why do you speak in parables? He said, because it's given for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables. But when God begins to reveal himself to Israel, it will be because someone by God's grace begins to unlock the mysteries of God. How? By revelation. Peter saw and recognized that Yeshua was Mashiach because God had revealed it to him that he was Mashiach and he saw it by the word. And that's exactly how Israel will recognize him today, by his word. That's how God's going to deal with Israel. And it's the same thing. Now, I, I would say this. No doubt that codes might not get someone excited. It might even get Gentile people excited to maybe uh, encourage their, their, their walk with the Lord. But if they get too caught up and they get too much depending on the code to be the one to, to answer the questions that God has for them, you'll end up taking them down another road that they shouldn't go. And, and, I, and I have myself, I've played around trying to do codes because I understand the Hebrew language so I could type in the different things. You know, Years ago, I would sit there sometimes and play with it. I guarantee you, and I know this for a fact because I got brothers that, that are so passionate about it. And, I, and, I, and, and there again, like I say, don't get me wrong, brothers, because when you guys do codes, I, I enjoy reading them. I have to admit, I enjoy looking at some of them. But, you know, I don't want to get too caught up myself either for the simple reason is, is when you go to doing codes, you spend hours upon hours upon hours. I mean, that's a major time-consuming thing to get in there and really search out things and search out things. You know, I, if I can take and spend that kind of time in prayer before the Lord, what would God do then? You see what I'm saying? I mean, I, I guess in, in what I'm trying to say here, I believe that the Bible codes have their place. So I, I'm not against Bible codes. But I do believe it is clear in the Scripture that God shows us exactly how He's going to reveal Himself, how He reveals Himself to us as Gentiles, how He will reveal Himself to the Jews. And we can't change God's Word. And the only other thing I would say as well, because you have to keep in mind, and, and I know I've talked to brethren before, and I won't call names, but I've talked to brothers before, and, and, and we speak, we've spoke publicly about this, and, and the brothers that actually do these codes, and I asked them, I said, I don't believe personally that you believe that the Bible code is the is uh, the final word uh, or, or is an interpreter of God's words. And those brothers agreed with that. I, I thank God for that. I thank God for their, for their passion that, yes, that they, they agreed with that. No, the codes do not, it's not the, uh, the interpreter of God's word. And that's a good thing. That's good to see that brethren can, can balance that out right. But also, though, what I see too, though, is... There are people that have gotten so caught up in just following Bible codes, they're not following their Bible. And that's when it becomes an issue. It's the same thing with the Jewish people. I mean, for the Jewish people, I can understand them getting more into this because they don't have the Holy Spirit to reveal things. They don't... It, and when I say that, my brethren, please understand, I know that God even helps guide you and lead you. I don't say that God's not guiding you and leading you to find things, and that's a blessing. But the thing is, is when we can see it in the Word, because a lot of people, they have no idea. They don't understand these codes. They, they, they couldn't, even if you write it out and explain it, it's still, as we say, it's Greek to them. They just don't get it. But get, you know, it's like Paul said, if, if, they all, if, you come in, if they come in and you all spoke with tongues, wouldn't they all say you're mad? 
But let somebody come in and one prophesy and say what the Lord is going to say that will happen and happen. Then will they not all fall down and say, truly the Lord is with you. They will say fall down. That doesn't mean worship. That means fall down in repentance. You know? In other words, let somebody that comes in to the church or, or, or something like that and they got some sin hidden in their life and God has given you a gift to where you've been in prayer before the Lord and you look over at the brother and your sister and you come to him privately and say, brother, sister, you know, you got this in your life. Uh, maybe it's a, a man with pornography and say, you, you've, been, you've been dealing in pornography and, and God revealed to me, brother, you've got to get rid of that spirit off of you and that will that man, he'll recognize and say, God is with that man. God forgive me, it's true. That's what God's trying to do. This is the way God deals with his word. This is how God sets up his things. And so I say this in, in reality, and I'm sure brothers, sisters as well that, that may do codes, I'm sure you guys have experienced that as well where people will just, maybe they get too wrapped up in it and you realize that, you know? So I say this to the brothers and sisters that, that listen, that, that, that listen to the, that, that might follow this or listen to this video. You know, I just encourage you, you know, spend more time with him. Spend more time with Yeshua alone. Spend more time reading your Bibles, you know. And, and please understand, I don't condemn, whether it be Jewish or Christians, those that do the researching of the codes, I, I can tell you now, I'll still enjoy it when they send these to me. I enjoy looking at them. I enjoy seeing the possibilities of what may be there. But you know, I've seen so many different types of codes. You have to understand, some people put uh, the Pope as the Antichrist in the code. The next guy puts uh, Obama in there as the Antichrist. Some might even put Oprah Winfrey in there for the Antichrist and it might come up. I don't know what all comes up, but I guarantee you one thing, there's, you know, I just know a few people that do codes, but there's literally thousands of people that do them. And how many different interpretations do they got? How many have got, uh, that'd be a good thing to do a search on the internet, Bible codes, and just type a, a different name of who, who it might be and just see how many different ideas they come up with. And it's probably written in their Bible code. You know, so my point is, is, Believers in Yeshua, our main focus, and I know that the brothers that I believe, that, and, and I say this here, I know Brother Chris and Brother Matthew that do Bible codes, and I think they would really agree with this as well. Look to Christ that and the, His Word. That is our ultimate. That is, our, that is what God gave us. You know, and stay focused on Him. He is our absolute, he is the interpreter of his own word. He interprets his word by making it manifest before us. And I say this, and this is dealing with not the people that do codes, not the Jews that do Kabbalah, but I say this also for those that have dreams and visions. If the Lord has spoke to you audibly, and you believe it to be the Lord, and you're willing to say, that God has said this. Like I said, remember, it's not possible for anyone to say, thus saith Hashem as of yet, unless you know His divine name. I'll tell you that for a fact. You could not say it without knowing His name. But if you believe that the Lord has spoken to your heart, and you share that, just remember, if it doesn't come to pass, then it's not God. And in biblical times, and to me, I believe we're still in biblical times, but the blood of Yeshua will atone for that mistake. But repent quickly. And, and believe me, I say this because I know it for a fact. When you're in the ministry, and I know many brothers that same, just like myself, they're in the ministry. They get people all the time that contact them, tell them that so-and-so said such and such. You hear it all the time. I hear it a lot. At least I know I do. I've had all kinds of people call me and tell me the Lord spoke to them audibly and said thus and thus would happen. And I tell you what, I've seen probably more than 90% of it fail. Do you realize where that puts them? 
At least one, one brother I know repented sincerely before the Lord. Every time, and, and, and I know there are so many times that people that have these dreams and things like that, and they, they don't come to pass. Now, I don't say that a dream has to come to pass immediately. The, God's time, I mean, we see that Isaiah the prophet prophesied of the coming of a virgin. Young maiden, rabbi singer, I know that. Um, but nonetheless, it took 800 years to get there, but it happened. So don't say that things cannot take time. But I see that sometimes people in a dream that they may have, they put the times on there and then it still doesn't happen. Do you know how many times I was told that people had dreams that the rapture was going to happen last year and it was going to happen by the end of November? Do you know how many people contacted me and said that? Do you know how many videos were on the internet saying that was going to happen? But it didn't happen. you know how many people prophesied and told me that the rapture would happen by the end of 2013, but it didn't happen. So I say these things not to hurt people's feelings, but we're being too loose with God's Word. His Word is holy. And what we say when we speak publicly, we need to know that it's from God, not hope so, not we think so, and then if we actually speak something in the name of the Lord and it doesn't happen. And that's like even when, we, when I do the videos and I tell you something, I see something laying in the Word and I believe that it, that it may be fulfilled. I always try to tell you, I'm not prophesying. From what it looks like to me, this is what, what may occur in everything. But I try to be honest with you and tell you these things. Because I'm not a prophet. I don't know the things that are going to happen. There's been times in my past where he has revealed those things. I've seen visions. I have had dreams that came to pass. And that is true. But I'm always cautious about what I speak about in the name of the Lord. Because he said, if you speak, and he didn't say it, and that's a serious offense in God's sight. So anyway, I say these things to you, and I say it especially in regards to Israel. This is why Israel is chasing all these things themselves. For them, there is no spirit. There's no Holy Spirit for them yet. They haven't recognized Mashiach. I guarantee you one thing. When they recognize who Mashiach is, and the Holy Spirit reveals Himself to them, you won't see Kabbalah nor the Bible Code among none of them. Why? They will have the very Redeemer they've been looking for. They will have Yeshua. They will not have a need for anything else. No wonder why we will take a hold of their skirt and say, we've heard the Lord is with you. Show us your ways. They won't be showing us the Bible code and they won't be showing us the Kabbalah. But they will be showing us, no doubt, the Torah. Things, the, the beautiful things of Torah that God had all of Israel. See, you have to remember the early believers in Yeshua kept Torah, they kept Sabbath. And by the way, just for a little thought to, to share with you guys, we are going to be starting very soon, in the very near future, and we haven't decided if it's going to be 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., but I believe it'll be 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to be starting a live Shabbat service because I understand many of you guys that want to be able to worship the Lord on Shabbat, on the Sabbath, and you're unable to because you don't have church in your area or a, a, a believing place that actually does honor the Sabbath. So we're going to start a live program for you guys to where you can come in and join with us as we worship the Lord. We will have a song and we will be following Torah, uh, not Talmudic tradition, but we'll be following according to the way Moses set it up to worship and to speak about 
the Lord God who created us all. Until we speak again next time, God bless you, Baruch Hashem, and we love you, and we thank God for you. Be blessed, and good evening.